this is Kyle with Icon Poly, and we have a 3D print here uh, with a little guy. This is actually our company mascot, and there's some imperfections when he come off the 3D printer. So we're going to prep him and get him ready for a mold because we 3D printed him, and uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to make a mold so we can make a bunch of these and. Uh, uh, Hopefully we'll be able to follow that process through. Uh, we do have another video that's going to go up about pouring a silicon mold. It's getting edited right now. So, uh, and then hopefully we'll be able to use him as part of that too. So anyway, I don't think you can see it. Uh, this is difficult material right here. Uh, it is a clear material that he was printed out of. Normally we print black and the reason we do that is you can see the imperfections a lot better when it's printed black. This one was printed in clear because we just had a little bit of clear material and we wanted to use it. So uh, I'm going to fix it and uh, and then get it ready for a mold. So there's a little hole actually here in the top because he printed standing up, just standing straight up. So when it got up here, it prints this so fast, what happens is it, it, it kind of melded. Uh, the material it's a fused filament system so it's hot when it goes through so it kept trying to print this little detail on top but what it was doing is printing hot over hot over hot so it's kind of deformed up here but that's really no big deal the only other thing is a little bit of here from some of the support material uh, on his hands and uh, maybe a little on his nose so first off we're going to sand those spots a little bit and this is 180 grit sandpaper um, I guess the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my glasses because I have to be able to see him better so I use thicker glasses when I'm looking at him so it's a little rough under here uh, because of the support material that was supporting that during the print so we're just gonna do a quick sand there and get some of that off um, up here this is not bad uh, there's no little burrs or anything on here there's a burr uh, and then on the end of his fingers here kind of a burr now this material is PLA and we use that a lot um, because most of what we do when we use a 3d printer is we 3d print to make a mold to get original sculpture so uh, we use PLA a lot this the the 3D printer that we have likes PLA. It works good on it. So we kind of stick with that because it works just fine for us. And I'm just taking some burrs off and I'm feeling him for any sharp burrs or anything. And the more, the more I get off of this little guy, uh, the less there's going to be in the in piece the sculpture when we actually do the castings so we're going to mold him everything that's on him is going to actually be reproduced in the sculpture so the more i get off of him now the less we have to do on each sculpture and if you're doing a hundred or something i guess it's better like to do it once right now than to do a hundred of them later Okay, so most of the burrs are gone off. So I'm gonna fill this little hole here on that. So what I'm gonna do there is we have a cart that has everything in it. So I'm actually gonna just use a glazing putty. It's a polyester-based glazing putty. We don't use polyester-based stuff much, but there's some pre-mixed products that work really good for certain things. And uh, we'll use it, uh, but we don't use enough polyester because we just don't like how bad it is for the environment and stuff so uh, but in this certain case this is actually one of the better products that we found that works to fill holes in 3d prints now if this 3d print was being you know sent out to somebody we wouldn't use this but we're actually prepping it just to make a mold and there's going to be a lot of people that say oh that's not the way you use that or this and that and that's fine um, this works for us knocked him over there this works for us for these little um reasons now if you're you know do, doing a car or something no this is not the proper way to use this but uh, but this works for this certain application matter of fact 
nobody would probably even tell you to use that other than us for this application. So, but we found it worked for us. So we just put a little hardener with a little bit and we can mix a, just a little bit of timing so it changes color. When you get a nice consistent color, um, you can use it that way, but you wanna get it mixed up. Now, this is a glazing putty. So unlike a Bondo or auto body putty, this is a lot thinner uh, material. It has its advantages and disadvantages. Now, in this certain case, it's not necessarily the best to fill holes with. Bondo is actually better better to fill holes with, but um, but this is we don't use Bondo here, so this is what we do. So, but what we can do is we filled out figured out how to put fillers and stuff in it to make it thicker if we needed to. So. I just put this a little bit of that in that hole. Now, what I can do, since I have that material right there that um, that can be used yet, I noticed under here there's a bunch of striations under the bottom of his bill of his hat. So I'm actually going to put that in there, and then I'll be able to sand that smooth. Now, we're going to put uh, a finish over this anyway, but the finish goes on extremely thin. So by doing this, and then I'll sand this, actually helps that out in the next step. And just sanding this little stuff like this is, is really not a big deal. So you can see the stuff is starting to set up already because I mixed more catalyst than what you would normally do there. But so there. I fixed a hole in the top of him, or I put that in there. It's not fixed yet. I'm going to actually do a little bit of uh, sanding and re-sculpting with a... I don't know if I'll need a Dremel or not. I'll probably just do it with sandpaper. Um, sometimes, if you got to rebuild, say his ear is gone or something, you can actually rebuild that with this material by just putting a glob on there and then going back and sculpting his ear in. Uh, that doesn't happen very often. This is pretty pretty common as far as the stuff that we got to deal with on these 3D prints. Um, so he's filled this stuff needs to set for like five minutes maybe ten minutes so we're gonna go ahead and cut the video and uh, we'll come back when it's ready to work with okay we're back this is uh, set up good enough to sand and kind of reshape now so uh, it's a pretty simple process we're just gonna take now this is gonna be 80 grit sandpaper uh, it'll take it off quick and then I'll hit it with the 180 and that'll kind of smooth it out better. So pretty much I'm just gonna sand this smooth that we put in underneath his, the bill of his hat. And it, it don't really take much. So I'm gonna get it, get it smooth. And like I said, there's just a bunch of striations under there that were probably a little heavier than I wanted to deal with when we we're putting the coating over it to smooth it all out to get rid of the rest of the striations so that's pretty good there make sure right around the edge of his bill is it's got all the big nasties off of it okay then we're going to move to the top here this is a little it's not a lot different but it's a little bit because there's like little ridges and stuff so you kind of got to watch what you're doing now the nice thing about this this material is that it's a lot soft, softer than the print is. So that's why you like to use it. So you can sand like the print and the material come off that we put on there, the glazing compound, but it doesn't really hurt the uh, 3D print itself. So you can kind of just reshape it back to where it needed to be even little lines and everything right in there. So again, 80 grit, that's to take it down fast. Then I'm gonna just kinda do a, a final smooth on it with uh, the with 180, which might not even be necessary because we're gonna coat it with a 3D print coating. But 
we're gonna do it anyway. So, pretty much got the main stuff knocked down. So I'm gonna use switch to 180 and do uh, just kind of smooth it out and also get anything that I might have missed before. Might actually even find stuff I gotta switch back to the 80 and get, but we'll see here. It's gonna take all of a really a couple minutes to to do this. I'm gonna switch back in the 80 to get this got a little bit up here in this crease that I want to get out. It's not coming out with the 180. So okay, got that. Just finish doing the rest of this under here. Um, and then we're going to come up here and do this. Okay, it's pretty good. Again, this little guy is only about, oh, I'm going to guess he's about six inches tall. I don't really remember the scale of him when we printed him, but, but you can see the, the little hole in the top was there, and then it also kind of messed up his little button on top of his hat, so you can kind of, I hope you can see this, I don't know, it's pretty small, but you can kind of see how it's all getting, coming back into shape, and you're not seeing that weird little melted area now. And his button is back, so it actually looks pretty decent for a little sculpture like this. And again, you know, on a lot of this stuff and the videos that we make, one of the things that we learned throughout our years of figuring out how to make a living doing this is that most artistic people are kind of perfectionists as, a, as well and that came with us too uh, this is a family owned business and a lot of us are kind of artistic and I myself struggled with that and I still struggle I actually struggle with it all the time um, perfectionism will cause you to go broke in business yeah it's got to be good the clients expecting it to be good but what I've found out about my perfectionism issues is that I would have a whole cache of sculptures that weren't quite good that I could work on for years and years and years and years that weren't, just weren't quite up to my standard or my scale. So we've had to balance, you know, getting the product out. And what, I, what we've learned is that even though we're doing this and we see and we think, oh, that could be a little bit better, when we actually do the sculpture, and finish it off and send it out nobody else notices it and you can kind of understand that because they're not seeing it being done so they don't know to look in that exact little spot and to be that picky about it they're looking at the sculpture as a whole so that's one thing that we we fight with ourselves on a daily basis kind of finding that that happy place where Sculptures are going to be really nice when they go out the door and the public is going to feel they're nice even though ourselves, we are the people that make them, uh, know that they can be better. But unfortunately, we don't have an infinite amount of time to do this. We're getting paid to get it finished and get it out the door. So there we go. He's done, now he's ready for the next step. So we fixed his hat, there's a little bit left there. But we fixed his hat, and uh, now we're going to go coat him and get him ready uh, for a mold. Okay, um, here's our little sculpture guy that we prepped for, or that we're actually prepping to make a mold of. And we fixed a couple of bad spots and some excessive striations uh, on the 3D print. And now we're gonna coat this little guy 
with a product that's going to smooth out any of these uh, minor striations and stuff. And uh, we don't use this a lot, but it actually works pretty good. Um, it's, a, it's a smooth on product and it's XTC 3D uh, brush on coating for 3D printed parts. And this is actually a sample kit that the, that the rep brought in for us that we're uh, testing. And we've used almost all of it so far. And it actually puts a nice surface on it that molds good with silicon mold. So uh, we're gonna use it. We're gonna show you how to use it here. And uh, we'll probably have a link to this in the bottom of the video. If you wanna check out underneath when it's all done that you, where you can buy this. It's not very expensive. And, um, and it, it doesn't just coat 3D. Um, sculptures. It can coat all kinds of different stuff because it's a it's an epoxy, so you can do some foams and stuff like that with it. But so the things we're going to need is this is our XTC uh, 3D, and then we're going to pigment it. Uh, we found that since this is a clear product, we found pigmenting it uh, works great, so you can see what you're doing, and it's especially going to work good on this one because this is a this was a, uh, a translucent print material. And so you need the uh, measuring um, stuff. Sometimes it comes with a little cup, but that's long gone. Um, so really simple is a teaspoon because this is all by volume. You can do it and convert it to weight, but on this particular product, it doesn't need to be. We, we do do it a lot uh, and we prefer to weigh by the gram, but on this particular product, we found it works just fine. And we use it in such small batches that um, that we just do the by, uh, by volume. And when you do that, you just need some type of measuring thing. You can use a cap off of a container or anything that you can say, Hey, this is equal parts. So, uh, we're going to do that. And then you're going to want to use gloves and I always have trouble getting these open. I'm going to have trouble getting this one open too. Um, you know, we do have certain things when we use the expensive latex or nitro gloves, but on a lot of the stuff that we do, we just use these food handler gloves because we don't like stuff um, to lay around. So uh, when you're using latex, they're, they're a lot more expensive than like these. You can get these for so cheap, it's ridiculous. And um, uh, that way we don't feel bad when we take them off and throw them in the trash. Um, and you're saving a lot of money because really you're just trying to protect keep this stuff off your hands. So, and we're gonna use a chip brush. This is a one inch chip brush, a teaspoon, a couple of mixing sticks, which we shouldn't use them all. Um, this pigment is actually UVO uh, pigment and it's a smooth on product and you can pigment it that. You don't, it doesn't, doesn't take enough that it really matters. Um, uh, and then of course the XTD 3D and just a nine ounce um, mixing cup. Uh, plastic cup you can get these this is a solo cup uh, and it works fine for this so first thing we do is uh, mix it's a two to one ratio on this at least I think that's what it is I'm actually gonna take the whole lid off of it because this side is actually kind of thick and there's not a lot left in here so here it comes the little guy over so it actually thins out a little bit when you when you mix it together so there's a teaspoon of that and we'll try to get it all out of there and it doesn't look like there's much here but it goes on so thin that trust me there's going to be enough to coat this little guy until we get you know 90 percent done and find out there wasn't enough but Like I said, this thing is just about empty. So, so we're kind of at the mercy of the viscosity right now of this, right here it comes. So 
sometimes that's the most frustrating thing. You're all set up and ready to go. And uh, you end up just having to wait. I find that a lot of times with silicones. They flow so slowly, they're so thick that you're thinking, oh yeah, I got this, I'll be done in just a few minutes. And then a few minutes later, you're just barely even starting to get poured with the stuff. But this is certainly looks inefficient. And it kind of is right now, but um, but if <laughs> if we had a full bottle, <laughs> we'd been way past this section already. That's about right to the end of of this kit of stuff anyway. parts of that and we'll just use the same same spoon I said this stuff is not really that touchy some stuff you want to be absolutely exact but we found this stuff is not really that touchy and then one part of that okay Okay. And then we just mix it up. Now we could put the pigment in and mix it, um, but we're just gonna mix it first. I like to get my stuff mixed up before I put the pigment in. I don't, I guess I don't know why. It's just from years of doing it that way. Okay, you notice whenever you mix something, this is this is the number one thing that people can you know mix all day long and not get it right it's crazy something simple causes so many problems but you just you you have to focus on scraping the edges that is where it will not get mixed so he's concentrating on scraping the edges and if you concentrate on scraping the edges you'll end up getting it mixed even though you're not worried about the center part of it and then the, the edges in the bottom, that's what you really got to worry about. Okay. So then this, I don't want a lot of this, so I'm just going to take just a teeny, teeny bit out of there. And you'll see how, how, how much that works. When in this clear material, these uh, UVO pigments actually really doesn't take a lot to really color things. So I keep knocking the little guy over. I actually throw this in the trash. And um, then we're going to stand him up or actually going to hold him. Now, normally I would put things on his feet or on the bottom of a, of a 3D print when we're coating it with this, because this stuff is gonna run down a little bit, and then that would allow it to run off and just run down along the edges. Unfortunately, here, there's not enough base to do that. So, um, so I'm just gonna, we've got this uh, clear polyester film that we use a lot, and uh, put it down, and then I'll be able to just peel that off later and, uh, and clean up around his feet. But, so that's got it mixed. Now we're just gonna apply it, it's pretty simple. Now you don't wanna put too much on. You just wanna coat the surface and then spread it out. It finds the low spots, is what it does. So you can see that even though it's pigment, this stuff is pretty, still pretty clear. And anytime you see a run, you, you want to get rid of that run. So trust me, it's, it really doesn't take a lot. It kind of finds the low spots that it needs to be, and then it just kind of sits there. Now here's a disadvantage of using 
using epoxies and chip brushes. Chip brushes tend to shed, so you, you just gotta be aware of that and just kinda um, pick out the hairs. In some cases it really doesn't matter, but but it bugs me. Now, I don't really know the working time on this uh, product. Uh, it's never been really an issue. Like I said, we don't really use it that much. Um, but, and then the time that that it takes for, for us to do what we need to do is just doesn't even come close to pushing that that time frame of pot life. So we don't really even, we're not even really worrying about it. And really you're just getting it on the entire surface and trying to not to let it build up too much in the corners and and on you know in certain detail that you don't want to wash that out of there so you just want to cover the surface and what it will do is it will run off the high spots run into and catch in the low spots, which is how it smooths the surface out. And we, you can do, you do multiple coats of this if you need to. Now, what we've noticed is on some things, it kind of fish eyes a little bit sometimes, uh, but the second coat always takes care of that. Now this little guy, I don't think we're going to do two coats. It's just going to take the one. It doesn't have really a lot of major issues. And you can grab it. And that's another thing good about the gloves. You can grab it. You just need to, when you set it there, just kind of go over those areas again to get the fingerprints out or, you know, smooth that back out. So he's pretty much coated now. And you notice I didn't even use close to all of what I had mixed up. And I'm going to put a little extra on his bill because there's striations on top of his bill. But I'm gonna watch for runs because I do not want it build up in certain areas. And I'll just kind of babysit this thing for just a couple of minutes and any of these low spots you know i'll try to make sure there's not too much running off but the stuff is sandable too it sands kind of hard but it's not a big deal really when you're doing something this small it, it sands harder than like the fill that we filled the hole with but again it's it's so small that it, it really takes no time at all so there you go he's coated now we're gonna let him sit we're actually just gonna let him sit overnight it is a Sunday I'm kind of here by myself doing this stuff so um, I'm gonna let it sit overnight and then tomorrow uh, we will actually be able to just crane him up and uh, pour a silicon mold out of it then so Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos.